بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, In this video we introduce uh, functions of two and three variables okay? And to do that we just recall functions of one variables We are always familiar with functions of one variables And we always write them in this manner y equals of of x these are the basic functions of one variable. When we write y equals f of x, uh, we call x the independent variable. So here the independent variable of the function is x, and we call y the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is, is y. Okay. So generally, y depends on x. So y is called the dependent variable, and x is called the independent variable. Uh, for functions of one variable x, uh, the domain will be numbers or real numbers, all possible values. The domain will be all possible values that will make the function real or defined. So usually the number, the domain will be numbers, numbers, real numbers, real numbers, numbers, real numbers. To graph the function, the graph, the, uh, graph of the, of the graph of the function always will be a curve. And usually it will be something like this. So to illustrate, to graph the function y equals f of x, we have just the x, y, a plane, x, y, a plane. And we, the, the graph will be just a curve. Just a curve. On the x-axis will be the values of the domain, okay, and on the y-axis will be the values of the dependent variable or the range, okay. So here if we take just a point x here in the domain, the corresponding y will be the following point. So this is y equals of f x, the graph of the function. Now the domain will be real numbers usually on the x-axis, on the x-axis. Axis. Axis. And the graph will be a curve, a curve. In the xy plane, in the xy plane. This is what is called functions of one variables. One variable, one independent variable x. In fact, in mathematics, we have also functions of two variables. Okay? And we always write them in this manner, z of f, x, and y. Okay? This is the standard notation for functions of two variables. The independent variable here are x and y, x and y. And y, and the dependent variable is z. So z depends on two values, two variables, x and y. So this is why we call them functions of two variables. Two variables, the number two refers to the number of independent variables. Okay. Now for the domain, for functions of, uh, for functions of two variables, the domain will be really points. We have to substitute two numbers, one for x and one for y, an ordered pair. This ordered pair will, be, will form a point in the xy plane. So the domain for functions of two variables will be points, points, x, y, in the xy plane, in the xy plane. So an ordered pair of two numbers, x and y, and they will form a point in the xy plane. And what about the graph? Here the graph will be a surface, a surface. A surface. And, well, the surface will be in a three space, and three space. Three space. And this can be pictured as follows. So here you have, you have to have a place for the points in the, of the domain and a place for the range or the z values. Okay. So the points of the domain will be in the xy plane. So we have something like this. Okay. 
This is x and this is y and this is z. So the points of, for the domain will be points in the xy plane, will be in the floor. And the corresponding val values for z, for the range, will be along the z axis. So here if we take a point here, so the graph, the general graph will be a surface. This is h. A surface, general surface. And if you take a point in the xy plane, so this is a point in the domain x, y, the corresponding value for z, this is h, z. So this is this, the point, and you will get, of course, this will be the point x, y, and z. Okay. Just like in the for functions of one variable, this is x and, and y. So this is for the for functions of two variables. The domain will be points in the xy plane, so they consist of ordered pairs. The graph will be a surface. The graph will be a surface in any three space. This can be extended to functions, really, that depends on three variables. And instead of x, y, we have also functions of three variables of f, x, y, and z. In that case, the value for the range will be called W. And this is the standard notation for functions of three variables. The independent variables are X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. And the dependent variable, or the value for the range, will be W. The domain here, too, we have to substitute three numbers. One for X, one for Y, one for Z. So the domain will be points, points, x, y, z, and three space, and three space, and three space. So the domain will be points in three space, x, y, z. What about the graph? Here the graph, we cannot really picture the graph, because here to make a graph, we have to make a four-dimensional coordinate space. Three dimensions, or three dimensions, three dimensional axis, or three axes for the, for the values of the, do, for the, for the domain, and one for the, for the range. I you have to have a four-dimensional space. This cannot be really pictured in any three space. So we can't really graph functions of three variables, the graph, usually you call them hyperspace, hyperspace. The graph is hyperspace, hyper, hypersurface, sorry, surface, and four dimension, four space and four space. But really we cannot, we cannot graph such, such functions. So we call them hypersurfaces in four, in four spaces. So we basically, We'll and when it comes to graphs, we really, uh, we really concentrate only for functions, on functions of two variables, where we can, we can graph, because the graph will be a surface in a three, in a three space. To illustrate what we explained, let's consider one example. So let's take the function of, of x, y, a function of two variables, equals x squared plus 3y squared. Let's ask about the basic questions about uh, such a function. So first, let's find the domain, domain of the function. What is the domain? As we said, the domain for functions of two variables will consist of points. So it will consist of points x, y, and the x, y plane, in the x, y plane. What are the possible values of x and what are the possible values of y that we can substitute? We can substitute so that we get a real value. At the, as a result, we get a real, a real value for f. Okay. Here, as you can see, we have only just a numerator. There is no denominator and there is no roots. So here we can substitute any value for x, any real value. And the same thing for y, we can substitute any real value. And when you substitute, you get a real, a real number. So here the domain will be the set of all points x, y, where x can take any real number, x between minus infinity to infinity, 
And y also can take any real number. Y between minus infinity to infinity. Okay. X and y can take any real number. So this is the domain. Graphically, the domain consists of the entire xy plane. The entire xy plane. So all points in two space, all points in the xy plane. So this is the domain for this function. Okay. What about the range? The range. I.e., what are the possible values of f? What are the possible values of f when you substitute any point in the in the domain? Well, one can say easily that you have x squared and y squared. So it's always x squared. Is positive greater than or equal to zero and also 3y squared it is also always greater than or equal to zero so when you add them still you get what greater than or equal to zero so when you substitute any value for x and y in the domain always you get a value greater than or equal to zero so this means of of x y of of x y always greater than or equal to zero so the range, the range will be the set of zero to infinity, zero to infinity, because f is always greater than or equal to zero. Well, the next is the graph. What is the graph of this function? We said the graph will be a surface in a three space. So what is this surface? What is this surface? In fact, well, you know, f is just z. So if you write it in this manner, z equals x squared plus 3y squared. Well, really, we, we can graph this. And this is a familiar surface. or a familiar, This is a familiar surface that was discussed before. It is, in fact, an elliptic paraboloid. An elliptic paraboloid. So the graph is the following. This is x, and this is y, and this is z. So this is an elliptic paraboloid with the axis, the z, the z axis. So the graph of this function is an elliptic paraboloid. Okay. A point here about the range. In fact, finding the range is always not easy. But one of the ways to find the range is from the graph if possible. If we can graph the function, then we can get the range from, from the, the graph. And here from the graph, notice the possible values of z are z greater than or equal to 0. All values greater than or equal to 0. Okay. We can read the range or the values of the range from the z-axis, the values on the z on the z-axis. And here it is from 0 to infinity. So for the range, specifically for the range, if you can graph, sometimes it is easier and easier to find the range from, from the graph. Now we discuss the notion of level curves and level surfaces for functions of two and three variables. Uh, so let's just give the definition of the level curves and level surfaces. The definition... Uh, the level curves of a function f of two variables are the curves in the domain of f given by the equations f of x, y equals c, where c is a constant, usually in the range of f. This is the definition of the level, the level curve of a function of two variables. So basically, we take the function and we equate it with a constant where c is some constant. For functions of three variables, we have the same definition, but the terminology is the level surfaces. So the level surfaces of a function of three variables are the surfaces in the domain of f with the equations of, of x, y, z equals a constant, where c is a constant in the range of f. So the same definition, but different terminology. 
level curves for functions of two variables and level surfaces for functions of three variables. What is basically a level curve? Just let's concentrate on the level curves because and the situation is similar for functions of uh, for level surfaces. So just let's concentrate on level curves now. What is really a level curve? Well, it is better to, to, uh, to illustrate the notion of level curves by an example. So let's see, let's consider the following example. Describe the level curves of the function of two variables of xy equals y minus x equals. So how to describe the level curves? So let me give the solution here. I will apply the definition okay, direct. So the level curves, the level curves, curves of f of xy equals y minus x squared by definition are the curves given by this equations are the curves curves given by the equations given by the equations of f x y equals c where C is a constant. What are these curves? Now the function is just y minus x squared equals C. Or you can write it in this manner here. y equals x squared plus, plus C. So the level curves of the given function are parabolas y equals x squared plus c parabolas parabolas the level curves are parabolas okay. let's graph some of these parabolas so let's take some values of c and graph them they are parabolas in the x y plane in the domain of the function Notice the domain here, the entire plane. I can substitute any point or any values for x and y. So if I take some values of c, so let me just graph the, this is the x, y plane here, which is the domain, the domain of the function. Now if I take c equal to 0, I get y equals x squared. So this is y equals x squared, the parabola. So this is when c equal to zero. I get y equals x squared. So this is a level curve for the for the function. One level curve. Okay. If I take c equals one, I get x squared plus one. So this is one. So I get the following. So this is c equals one. And the equation is y equals x squared plus plus one. This is a second level curve. If I take c equals minus 1, I get another parabola here. So this is so this is c minus 1 and get y equals x squared minus minus 1. Okay. So these are some, some level curves for the, for the function. So they are curves in the xy plane. In the domain in the domain of the function okay. now what do they give us this level curves so they are values in the in the in the domain what can we get what can we get about or what information can we get about from this level curves about the function f, okay. here we ask a question if you just consider the points on the curve y equals x squared y equals x squared so just concentrate on these points here. All points in the xy plane, on the, uh, in the parabola, y equals x squared. And if we ask, what is the value of the function at each point on this parabola, in this middle parabola? What is the value of the function? So if I take a point on the parabola here, substitute in the function, what is the range value? What is the range value? Well, each, at each point on this parabola, y equals x squared. So if I take xy, 
substituting the function, I get y minus x squared. But on this parabola, y equals x squared. So when you substitute, you get what? Zero. We get zero. So the value of the function, the value of the function at each point in this parabola is just the value of c, which is zero. The same thing, the value of the function at each point in this parabola is just minus one, the value of c. The same thing, the value of each, the value of the function at each point in this parabola, y equals x squared plus one, is just the value of c, which is which is one, which is one. So. So this is H D, this is the significance of the level level curves. So we can say, well, at each point here, I can just to find the y the y value, I just can take C to my the value will go to minus one. The values here will go to zero in the x in the x y plane. The values here will go to one. We just go one point up. So here now we can just write, we can complete the definition. So if we take a level curve. It will be taken by f to the value c, the range value c. The same thing for the level surface. The level surface, it will be taken by f to the value, to the value c. So this is what we mean by level curves and level, level surfaces. Let's consider the following problem. Find the domain and the range and the graph the function given by the following formula. So we have f of x, y equals root 4 minus x squared minus y squared. This is a function of two variables. So the domain will be a set of points x, y. So what are the possible values of x, y in the plane that we can substitute so that we get a real value? Because of the root, the square root, this will be a real value provided the whatever inside, which is 4 minus x minus y square, has to be greater than or equal to 0 to guarantee that the value of the function is, is positive. So we have to have 4 minus x squared minus y squared greater than or equal to zero. And this equals the following, we can write it in this manner, x, y, which is x squared plus y squared less than or equals four, less than or equals four. So this is, this is the domain. Well, let's see what are these points in the x, y plane. What do they form? In fact, if we take x squared plus y squared equals 4, you get this is a circle. This is a circle in the xy plane. So this is a circle of with center the origin and radius 2. So this is, if it is x squared plus y squared equals 4. If it is less than or equals 4, then We'll take, we'll, we'll get all points inside the circle. All points inside the circle. But this is the domain. This is the sketch of the domain of the, of the function. So the domain of the function, if you want to describe it verbally, it consists of all points on and inside the circle with center the origin and radius, and radius two. This is for the, for the domain. We need the range and the graph. Okay. Before we go to the range, let's just consider the graph if possible. Okay. So what is the graph of this, of this function? Well, well, f of x, y is just z. So this is the function z equals root 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And we ask ourselves whether this function or whether the graph is a familiar, a familiar graph or, or not. In fact, if we square both sides, what do we get? If you square both sides, you get z squared equals 4 minus x squared minus y minus y squared. Okay. If we take x and y to the other side, we get x squared 
plus y squared plus z squared equals equals 4. Well, the graph of this equation is a familiar graph. It is just a sphere. A sphere with center 0, 0, 0, the origin, and radius, radius 2, and radius 2. So this is a full sphere, a full, a full sphere. So if you graph it, you get something like this. This is a full sphere. This is two, and this is two, and this is two. A full sphere. Okay. This is for x squared, x squared, plus y squared, plus z squared, equals four equals. But our function, our original function is this, z equals the root, the root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So the graph of this function has to be part of the graph of the sphere. Which part? Which part of the, of the sphere? Well, since z, you have the root, so the values, of, the possible values of z are positive. The possible values of z are positive. So we take the part of the sphere with positive values of z. And this part will be only the upper part of the, of the sphere. So the graph, it gives us just the upper part of the of the sphere. So this is two, and this is two, and this is this is two, and this gives us the equation, the graph of the function four minus x squared minus y squared. And notice in the in the base in the x y. Notice this part here. In the floor, it is just the domain, the domain of the function. So this is this is the graph. It is the upper part of the sphere of radius two and center the origin. Since we were able to graph the function, then from the graph we can get we can get the range. The range. The range equals, well, all possible values of z from the graph. And from the graph, all possible values of z are from 0 to 2, 2. This is h, z. So we take from 0 to 2, 2. So the range will be all values from 0 to 2, 2. This is the range of the, of the given function from the graph. We get it from, from the graph. We consider the following problem. Find the domain and the range and the graph the function of two variables f of x, y equals minus root x squared plus y squared. So the domain is the solution. Domain for a function of two variables, it will consist of points x, y. We ask ourselves what are the points or what are the values of x and y that when we substitute inside the function we get a real value. Here we have a square root so we have to make sure x square plus y square is positive. And in fact here it is always positive because of the square x square plus y square. So when you, when, for, when you substitute any value for x and any value for y what is inside the radical is greater than or equal to zero. And hence, it is defined. The square root of a positive quantity is a positive quantity, or is a real number. So here, all we can take, we can substitute any value minus infinity, infinity, and also y any value, any real number, any real number, because the the quantity inside the radical becomes greater than or equal to zero. So the root of a positive quantity is a real number, okay. i.e. the domain will be the entire xy plane, the entire xy plane. Every point in the, in the, in the plane. Okay. Well, before we do the range, let's go to the graph and let's see whether we can graph this function or, or not. Okay. Graph. 
we write it in this manner this is f of x y is just z equals minus root x squared plus y squared and this is really a familiar a familiar surface which was discussed before well just to recall that surface try to square both sides if you square both sides you get the following z squared equals x squared plus y squared and the graph of this is a, just an elliptic cone an elliptic cone with the axis the z the z axis so the graph will be something like this this x this is y and this is z an elliptic cone axis is the z axis and vertex is the is the origin so the graph will be something like this so this is the graph of the elliptic cone z squared equals x squared plus y y squared of course it will extend and forever upward and and downward okay. so this is an elliptic cone but so what is the graph of our original function the graph of our original function will be part of the full cone this is a full cone which part of the cone is the graph of the original function if you look at the function z here z the value of z is always negative so we take the graph of this function is the part of the elliptic cone with negative z values with the negative z values then the negative z values from the cone comes from the lower part of the cone the lower part of the cone so here or the if we take the take the lower part of the cone okay where z is positive this is z where z is negative here z here is negative so we take this part because z is negative so this becomes z equals minus root x squared plus y y squared so this is the graph now from the graph it is very easy to find the range the range will be minus infinity to zero so all possible values of f all possible values of z are all negative numbers so the range range for other function will be minus infinity to to zero minus infinity to zero we can get it from from the graph let's consider the following problem find the domain and the range and the graph the function of two variables given as follows f of x y equals x squared plus plus one the domain the domain a function of two variables a set of points x and and y so we ask ourselves what are the possible values of x and what are the possible values of y that can be substituted in the formula for the function and that will give us a real number a defined number here we have x squared plus one so i can substitute any value for x it will give me h a real number so this is x from minus infinity to infinity and y well in fact there is no y in the formula so y can take also any real any real value so y will be minus infinity to infinity so this is the domain so verbally it is the entire x y plane the entire x y plane For the range and the graph, let's see whether we can let's see whether we can sketch the graph of the function or not. Graph. The graph is just it is the function z equals x squared plus plus one. What is the graph of this of this function? Well, it is a surface in three space, but the equation contains two two variables x and z so the graph is a cylinder a cylinder the graph is a cylinder 
a cylinder. And the graph, to graph this cylinder, we have the following. This is the uh, y, and this is x, and this is z. So to graph an equation in two variables in a three space, I graph this in the x and z space, in the x and z plane. In the x z plane, on this one, the graph is a parabola with, with okay, we shifted one unit up. So this is the graph, this is the graph. So this is the graph in the x z plane. The variable y is missing, so it is a free. So you just translate this parabola along the missing variable, which is along the y-axis. So if you if you translate it, you get something like this. But this is this is the graph. This is the graph. Okay. So the graph will be something like this. Okay. Just a surface like like this. Like this, parallel to the y to the y axis. This is the graph. Well, what is the range from the graph? The range, the possible values of z will be one to infinity. One to infinity. So the range, the range equals all the possible values of z are one to infinity. One to infinity. The surface will be extended to infinity. So this is the range of this function. Let's consider the following problem. Find the domain and the range of the function given by f of x, y equals ln 2 minus x squared minus y squared. So domain for the domain will be the set of all points x, y, x, y in the plane, in the x, y plane. So what are the values that are the values of x and y that when substituted you get h a real number. Because of the len, we have to make sure that the values that we substitute will make everything inside the len positive. I.e. we have to cho choose the values x, y so that two minus x squared minus y squared which is inside it has to be greater than z it has to be greater than z because you remember the ln function the domain of the ln function y equals ln x a function of one variable it is the domain from zero to infinity open to open so here we have to make sure that everything inside is greater than zero so that when we substitute you get a real a real number this gives us, when you simplify this, you get the following here. This is the set of all points x, y, such that x squared, x squared, plus y squared, less than, less than 2. Graphically, well, this is the following. So this is, you have in the x, y plane, the x, y plane. If I take the x squared plus y squared equals 2, I get a circle with center the origin and radius root 2. Root 2. Now I need x squared plus y squared less than 2. So I will take all points inside, inside the circle. Inside the circle. And since here I don't have equality, so really the circle is not included. The circle is not, the points on the circle are not included. So the domain of the function will consist of all points inside the circle with center the origin and radius root 2. All points inside. This is for the domain. For the range, the range here, for the range, well, we cannot find the range from the graph because the graph of this function is not really an easy graph. We cannot really graph it. To graph it, we have to use a computer, uh, computers to, to, to graph it. So let's find the, the range without really knowing the graph. 
and here we just make some observations about about the the, the values that we can substitute in the in the in the function here. For first, notice the following: for if you substitute a value here, well, any value it has to satisfy x squared plus y squared less than two. So for any value, for any value in the domain, for any value x for any point in the domain point x y in the domain in the domain we have the following x squared plus y squared less than or equals to or just or really or just just this is h2 minus x squared minus y squared Greater than, greater than zero. So any value in the in the domain, when you substitute, you get, you get two minus x squared minus y squared greater than zero. This is one observation. A second observation. Notice that if I take just minus x squared minus y squared, this is minus x squared plus y squared. This is always negative. This is positive and time. This is, this is less than, less than or equal to zero. Okay. Now add two to both sides. When you add two, you get the following. Two minus x squared minus y squared less than zero plus two. So this is two minus x squared minus y squared less than or equal to two. Okay. okay, so I have two inequalities, two inequalities. For any point in the domain, in fact, 2 minus x squared minus y squared, 2 minus x squared minus y squared, it is less than or equal to, and it is greater than 0. Greater than zero. So what is inside the len is between 0 and, and 2. Okay. Well, I need the len of this quantity. In that case, take ln of each side. So this becomes ln 2 minus x squared minus y squared less than or equals ln 2. What about the zero here? Here in the limit, okay, so of this quantity approaches zero, the ln will approach minus infinity. The ln will approach minus infinity in the, in the limit. This gives us, well, this is just f of x, y, f of x, y, less than ln 2, greater than minus n. Infinity. So the possible values of f, the possible values of f are between minus infinity and ln, ln 2. So the range, range of the function equals minus infinity to ln, ln 2, ln 2. This is the range of the function. Let's consider the following problem. Describe the level surfaces of the function of three variables of, of x, y, z equals x plus 1 over z minus, minus, minus y. But you, you apply the definition. So the level surfaces, level surfaces, the level surfaces, of 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 x y z are given by given by we take the function of of x y z equals a constant c as a constant so now just replace the function f by its value so this is x plus 1 over z minus y equals c. And we try to solve, just rewrite this implies, so this is x plus 1 equals c times z minus y, okay. Or, just this is x plus 1 equals c z minus c, c. 
If we rewrite this, this again, this becomes the follow. This is x plus cy minus cz equals minus minus 1. So this is the equation for the level surface. What is, what is the graph of these surfaces? Okay. Well, this is H, just this is, these are planes, 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 okay. Because the general equation of a plane is just AX plus PY plus CZ equals D. So this is, it has the form of uh, the general equation of a plane. So the level surfaces for these functions are planes. We consider the following problem. Describe the level surfaces of the function of x, y, z equals len x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So again here, the solution here, just this, you apply the definition directly. So the level surfaces, the level, level surfaces of, 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 x, uh, of, of, of x, y, z are given by given by the equation of f x y z of f x y z equals a constant c is a constant now what is f just up substitute the value of the function len so this is len of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals equals c so this is the equation of the level surfaces. Okay. Well, can we describe the graph of these of these equations? Well, we can if we rewrite the form of the equation here. So let's rewrite it. So get rid of the len. So take the exponent, the exponent of both sides. Okay. So this implies if we take e power e power len x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals e power c. Okay. If we simplify further, this gives us the following. This is just x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals e power 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 c. Now, in this form, we can describe the level surfaces of f. These are spheres, spheres with center the origin, 0, 0, 0, and radius, 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 just root e power, e power c. So the level surfaces for these functions are sphere with center the origin and radius square root of e power c. Let's consider the following problem. Find the level curve of the function of, of x, y equals len x, y that passes through the point 2e. It is a problem about level curves. So the first step, we find the equation of all possible level, level curves. And for that, we use the definition directly. So the level curves, the level curves, level curves of f are given by, are given by, given by, of of x, y equals c, well, c is a constant. And this gives us the following here, this is just len of x, y equals c. So this is the equation the general equation of any level curve, and we have really infinitely many, many level curves. But for the question, we need one level curve, one specific level curve. We need the level curve, which one of these, that passes through the point 2 and E. So for that level curve, really there is a specific value of C, a specific value of C. Okay. So what is that specific value of, of C? To find that specific value of C, well, I need just to substitute the point on the level curve. Why? Because the level curve passes through the point. 
So it satisfies its equations. Okay. So substitute, substitute the point 2 and E in the equation of the level curve to find the corresponding C. Okay. This becomes len 2 E equals equals C. So the value of C is just len len 2 E. Okay. So the level curve, the level curve of this function that passes through the point 2e is the level curve given by the equation of, of x, y equals c. What is the value of c? It is just len 2e, len 2e. Okay. So we can find that the equation also of the level curve, so this gives us the following. I have len x, y equals c. This is the general equation of any level curve. But for our level care, for the specific one, the value of C is len 2E. So this gives us the following, len XY equals len 2E. We can simplify this further. It gives us the following, XY equals to 2E. Or, or yes, Y equals 2E over, over X which is a hyperbola, and the graph will be the, something like this. And if we set 2, 2 here, for example, 2, we get the following point E. So this is the point 2 and E, okay. And this is the graph of Y of the level curve. Y equals 2E over, over X. This is the this is the answer.